right, we're going to talk about the 1-3-1 uh, zone defense. A lot of coaches tend to get a little bit sidetracked about playing zones, you know, especially with the younger age groups. If you get into the middle school game, and I hear a lot of coaches talk about, well, how is that teaching the kids anything about playing zone? You know, playing zone is not teaching them anything. Yeah, it is. Because in zones, regardless of what zone you're in, 2-3, 1-2-2, 3-2 two, 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 uh, two matchup, regardless, 1-3-1, one, one, the same principles apply in a zone like they do in the man. You got to move on the pass of the ball. You got to load up weak side. You got to rebound. You got to be able to guard the dribble. You got to be able to close out to three-point shooters. I mean, all of those things tie into each other. So just because a team is, you know, teams are teaching zone defenses regardless of what type of zone it is, and regardless of how young the kids are, they're, they're not, there's no wrong or right. You know, it's just the way that they prefer to do things, and, and, and there's more than one way to skin a cat, as the old saying goes. So uh, we're going to hop into some action here. Uh, let me have, uh, no, I want some length. Let me have you. And, and you can really cater this towards your personnel. You know, some teams are big, some teams are not. I know when I worked for Coach Craig Robinson, uh, who's the head coach at Oregon State, uh, about three seasons ago, we, we ran this defense as well. And we had, I mean, we're in the Pac-12, you know, so we're playing against UCLA, Arizona, you know, Oregon, night in and night out. But we had some dudes too. We were long and athletic, and we just really pressured teams. We used our length and our size to really disrupt teams and throw them out of rhythm, all right? Holy Cross, complete 180. You know, we got guys who are kind of undersized, you know, they think the game a little bit more. The skill set, you know, is okay, but the talent level is nowhere near what it is in the Pac-12. So you can get the job done regardless of what type of personnel you have. You just got to be able to know what buttons to push and where to put guys within the zone so that your team can be successful overall. So I'm going to go with a uh, kind of a non-traditional lineup. We're going to have you play at the top. He's got size, athleticism. And when I look at this dude, I'm like, wow, you know, I don't want no parts of him. So I'm putting him at the top of my zone. He's tatted up. He looks mean. You know what I mean? I'm bringing the ball across and I'm seeing this dude flying at me with his wingspan. He's got a good build. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm on my heels. I'm turning the ball over. I'm lobbing it. One of my teammates is picking it off going on the other end. So my top guy, and he don't have to be the biggest guy. At Holy Cross, our dude was 5'7", played the top and just disrupted everybody disrupted everybody. He would pressure the ball, he would lay off. Teams would bring it across and they're confused. They don't know what to do. They pick up their dribble right here, he'll back off, and the guy's like on, on an island by himself. He has nowhere to throw the ball and he's right here across half court. All right, so in this case, I'm gonna use uh, you know, a big, athletic, intimidating body. Now, the top guy, his responsibility is to do what I just said, make you confused, make you think, you know, make you uncomfortable. Sometimes he'll get up here and play the ball aggressively, use his wingspan to bother you. Sometimes he'll back up. Sometimes he'll come up. I back it up to pick my dribble up, and it's a two-guard front. No, come up. As soon as I pick my dribble up, he jumps off, and I may throw the ball right to him. I'm constantly, the top guy is constantly keeping guys guessing. Now, one thing to really keep in mind is that you don't want your top guy running around with his head cut off. He has to be very selective in what he does because he can tire out fast and he's basically wasting energy for no reason if he's not being effective. So you don't want guys up here pressuring the ball constantly every time. Pressure a couple times, back off a cup, mix it up, keep them guessing. All right, so this guy's responsibility is to keep the ball out of the middle of the floor. So if I'm bringing the ball across the floor within our offense and you're up, you're the top guy, you, you have to steer me to one side. Whichever side that may be, I don't care. We may say on the scouting report, this guy is right hand dominant, dominant for some left. You may just take away my right hand and all, all the way because uh, I'm uncomfortable using my uh, left hand, all right? You're keeping the ball out of the middle of the floor. So even if you gotta come up and pressure me and I have to step over here into the outer third of the floor, that's what you gotta do. You cannot let me bring it up in the middle of the floor. All right, so I may, I, I just, Mention the phrase outer third. So the floor is basically split up into three sections, all right? You got your outer third, your inner third, and your outer third. We don't want the ball working in the inner third, all right? So you push him whichever way you want and get him out of the middle third, all right? Now, give me a white in the corner. 
Offensively. Offensively in the corner. Now, you push the ball to the outer third, and let's say I come across, and now it becomes a two-guard front. Let's say I throw the ball here. We'll talk about this wing spot next. When I throw the ball there, you got to sort of get off in the help, and you sort of load up. And what happens is, is this thing morphs into like a 2-3 zone. All right? Give me a wing. Uh, let's go with you. Let's go. Flip your shirt over. Over, yeah. All right? So now we got this wing spot here. His responsibility, throw me the ball back up here. So remember, when the ball goes in the corner, it morphs into a 2-3 zone. So I'm bringing the ball up, right? You're on the wing, so it's a 1-3-1. One, one. He's forcing me to the outer third. Now, when I get outside of your coverage, I'm in the outer third, you got to back up and sort of play a defensive back. You know what I mean? More likely than not, teams will go two guard fronts against this. So if I kind of lob it over there, you may be able to get one, all right? You release him to your teammate, this wing right here. This wing is usually typically a long and athletic guy. You don't want any short wings. What is he going to do, you know? Guy who's short, he's not athletic, he can't really bother passes. These guys on these wings are athletic, they're aggressive, they're just making your life miserable, all right? So when he passes you off, me off to you, you step up and you got to pressure me, all right? And your job is you cannot allow any direct corner passes. Okay. If I'm able to do this, you're having a seat next to the coaching staff, yeah. all right? The only way I get that ball to the corner is if I have to lob it like this. Now, if I have to lob the ball, that's a plus, even though we don't get a steal because what it does is it allows your teammates to cover their spots. So just like in man defense, you know, guys are low, you know, they're getting off the ball, loading up. It's the same principles. You're just more so covering an area than a man. So if I lob that ball here, your responsibility is to get right here. So then it morphs into a 2-3 zone, basically, when the ball goes in the corner. All right? Now, bottom guy. You my little bulldog. You're going to be the bottom guy. Go, 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 uh, go blue. Bottom guy. He can be a small guy. He can be a big guy. I mean, it all depends on your personnel, but he has to be the heart and soul. He has to be the bulldog, the tough guy who's going to fight because he's going to be He's going to be guarding guys in the post. We, you know, we had another small point guard who was 5'10", and he's guarding guys 6'8 down here on the post, and they're just trying to post him and lob him, and he's just moving his feet, he's using his legs, and they could not get the ball to their big guy. You got a 6'8 on the 5'10", and they couldn't even get on the ball. He's tough, he's fighting, he's scrapping for everything, and he's covering the corners, all right? So the key with this guy is, let's start the ball, let's back it up a little bit, all right? So if I'm in the inner third, where you at? You're staring me, all right, all right, I'm here. You release and you get up here. You get up here and attack me. You don't let me get comfortable. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You read and you're reading where the ball is. So when the ball is centered, yeah, you're reading it. And if there happens to be a post on either block, most teams will go one block, fill one block. You're sitting on top of that guy. You're fronting the post. You cannot play behind because what happens is teams will come down and just fire it in there and it's a layup. So you're fronting the post, all right? I release to you. Now, if you're fronting the post, you should not get caught up on the screen. Teams will try to screen in with that post, ball side post, so they can come here and kick it there for a quick three. So if you're fronting the post, you should just be able to roll over the top of that guy and get out the shooter, all right? So let's, let's, let's kind of do a little dry run here. All right, I'm dribbling. You get me in the outer third. You're attacking me, all right, good. I swing it here. You're sprinting out. Where are you supposed to go? Right here. Yeah, plug that gap. No, not too deep. About elbow, right there. And I want you to see the ball and see your man. There you go. Because I'm going to be here. He goes to drive middle. Get in there and help him. Yep. And your job, your job is to cover the three. Come on, lock, lock in. Cover the three, and you can't give up middle drive. Okay. Now, it's a little bit different than what Coach Chambliss was saying. We teach our guys you force baseline. You want to shrink the floor. If you force him baseline, this is all he's got to work with right here in this area. You let him go middle, he can do anything he wants. He can come here, drop it off, fire it back. You know, a guy may run the baseline, drop it off here, shot here, kick it here, kick it to a guy filling the top. There's just too many options. 
So if you force guys baseline, you can shrink the floor, all right? Let me get uh, another white, you in the opposite corner. All right, let me get uh, you, you, uh, you on the wing. Go blue. Opposite wing, same responsibilities. Same responsibilities, all right? So we're playing without a center right now. We're missing one, one thing. So these wings are interchangeable, all right? They're interchangeable. Give me a, go white. Two guard front, hustle up. All right, so the wings, your spots are interchangeable. We're gonna talk about, things kind of change a little bit now when you start getting more people out here. You push me out of the inner third to the outer third, you get up and attack me, all right? Your job, this opposite wing, this is key, especially at the college level. Guys are too good of passers and athletes. If this guy doesn't drop to the block, weak side block, it's dunks and lobs all day long, all right? Teams will run plays where they actually pick this back guy right here, this opposite wing, and just run this guy or the corner guy to the rim and they throw it up diagonal, all right? So this guy's gotta always be on alert. That ball is opposite wing, you right here. Cover, cover, covering your spot opposite block, and if they happen to swing it over, we teach our guys to go out and up. Now why would we teach you to go out and then up? To take away what? Yeah, there you go, that direct corner pass. So this guy shouldn't just be able to catch it and snap it to the corner for a quick three. All right, that's where most of the threes come from. A very high percentage of threes against a 1-3-1 comes from the corner. So you cannot allow any direct passes to the corner as a wing, all right? Now, same thing, the ball's over here. You get up here and attack them. You kind of toy with it. You kind of toy with it, because you're gonna have your center, who I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna put him in here next, where you, know, you may get up here, mess with him, and he may throw you one other end. It's a dunk, all right? He goes corner, what's your spots? Hold up, nope, you're too deep. It becomes a two-three zone. No, we got the center doing that. We'll talk about that next. You drop into the opposite block, all right? And you basically sort of filling in here. Becomes a two-three zone, all right? You forcing him baseline, all right? All right, so we're just gonna cover the uh, spots real quick. We're gonna move the ball around. So let's go four corners, white, let's go. So up top. Let's go, back it up. Back it up and dribble it across. All right, you get on him, you get on him. Here we go, get on him. Hold up, hold up, hold up. None of that, none of that. You can't, you can't, he cannot make that pass. Yeah, you gotta get out wide. So the reason that happens is because you're in too far. You can't be like this, you, you, you're getting out wide. So when you dribble it up, dribble it up. He dribbles it up, you go get him and you're here. You're taking away, only way he gets that ball to the corner is if he has to lob it. All right, he has to lob it to the corner and that allows your teammates, the bottom guy may even be able to pick that off if it hangs in the air, all right? Yeah, if you can get deflections, great. We, that's the, our wings are our most athletic players. They're long and athletic. Get deflections, yeah. Here we go, you can turn it to me, you can go corner. Stay in your spot though. Come on, yeah, I gotta feel your presence. There we go, there we go. Good, hold up. You gotta take that wide. That's, that's the hardest position to cover that, that scenario because you go from dropping and then it gets swung back to your guy and your initial reaction is to close out head on. It's really hard to adjust. You gotta come out and take away that passing angle and force him to dribble it. You got two teammates right there. Center, come on out here. One of you guys, let's go. Now, here's the other element. The center's there, so you basically most 1-3-1s one, ones you watch, they teach to back this guy off. We want this guy to be aggressive. He's usually gonna be your biggest guy. He's gonna be long. He's gonna be, you know, he could be anywhere from 6'8 to 6'10, 7 foot, depending on your personnel at the college level. In high school, if you got a 6'5 guy right here, 6'4 guy, that's, that's good too, all right? So what we tell, tell our centers, step over here, is you're plugging this gap. So this guy can't catch and split, all right? We tell our guys, if that ball cracks the three-point line on the dribble or pass, you didn't do your job. So your job is to keep this guy from splitting because it helps your wing recover, all right? So the ball's there, get up. Get to where you're supposed to be. Where are you supposed to be? That's a dunk. He lobbing that to the rim, yeah. Drop down to the block, take that away. 
All right, I'm over here, swing it. Get here, there you go. Now let's say, get out wider. No, don't turn your body, you're just, you're just here. You're here, just like that. You're gonna be between me and the corner guy. Okay. And I gotta pass it over your head. Now this is where you get them. You, you bait guys, they start dribbling. They think, oh man, this is a gap right here. I can start dribbling into there. And then here come the center, you stepping up. Our centers lead us in charges when we play this because we bait guys into dribbling the ball here because they know they can't go direct corner. He steps up and he runs him right over. We just worked on the charge drill, all right? Or they come in here and boom, you release, you get that steal and go, all right? Here we go. And the thing is, is that it's, it's a funny defense because it's basically three guys guarding one and people think they can exploit it and then they play against it and it's like, they're scratching their heads. I mean, we're literally looking down the sidelines when I work for Craig and we're playing against ranked teams in the country, blue blood programs, and they're like, they, just, they can't figure it out. The players are looking confused, the coaching staff doesn't know what to do. And at Holy Cross, we made our tournament run the same thing. I mean, it just completely baffled people. And there's only a handful of things you can do against it. So it's very hard to prepare for it. All right, all right, so we're gonna, uh, we're gonna go through a few reps here and just have you guys covering ground, all right? So if I bring it across, you lift, you lift. A lot of teams go three out, you go to the block. They'll go three out, two in. We don't have the fifth guy, but they'll go three out, two in. So when that happens, your job is to keep it out of the middle of the floor because if they got two blocks filled, what'd you say? Yeah, yeah, go five. All right, so now the pressure's on you. Uh, go to the block for me. Yep, on the block. Now you may have to back off a little bit until the ball sort of comes in your area, you know what I mean? And you gotta, you gotta provide a little bit of help, all right? So your job is to crowd me, all right? You're, cl you're climbing into me, you're forcing me to one side, all right? You can't let me keep it in the middle of the floor. I go here, boom, it's here. Yeah, good, and he's, hold up, hold up. And you're fronting the post, and that's just how we want to do it. We want to force skip passes, because it allows us time to recover. Relies us, allows us time to recover. I'm not going to get into like, a lot of offensive actions, because it'll take too long, but I just want to give you all the basic uh, concepts. Now let's go back four out, all right? Well, one block field, you just stay on the block. You move block to block and follow the ball, all right? Follow the ball, okay? It's going corner. Hold up, hold up, hold up. You got it. Yeah, you got to go, man. The key to this is you have to react on the pass. You can't react once he catches it because you're done. Yeah, you got to be, you got to react on that pass. And once it, I release it, you're flying to your spots to help. All right. So the ball's corner. What are we in? Ball's corner. What are we in? It morphs into a two, three zone. Hold up. You got to front that post. That's one thing I got to cover. So the bigs, you may go from being up here, come back. Being up here, where are you supposed to be? Don't be too soft. Yeah, get in, get in between me and that other guard over there, all right? You go from here to when I go corner, you got to sprint down to the block. There you go, in front the post. And what you see a lot is, is a lot of teams will try to take this guy and maybe put him deep wing and they'll try to lob it over. And if you're in your spot, that's a steal all day long because you're coming from the backside and you're taking the lob out, you're taking the ball out of the air. You got to be providing that help, you know what I mean? All right, let's swing it back around. Here, I'm throwing it over here. Good, all right, dribble it in there, dribble it in there. Good, 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 good. All right, let's move it now, I like it, I like it. Let's move it, swing it, there you go. Good, 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 keep it moving. All right, let's try to score, White. Let's try to score, White. Hold up, hold up. All right, that's good, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up, that's good. I'm glad you did that. You gotta cover flashers, all right? So let's see, the ball was, where's the ball? Opposite wing? Teams will do that. They'll send multiple flashers. Now, who on the floor sees everything? You, right? Yeah, so you gotta be talking. You front in the post, you see everything. You gotta be ready to get out to the corner. You see in here, 
opposite guy you got to talk to because that's coming from your side. So in this scenario, I was up there, you're front in the post, you flash in there, you got to take on that flash. Okay. All right, you got to take on that flash if there's nobody else because there's nobody else over here. All right, so hold on, we'll start it from here. All right, we'll start it from here. All right, flash in there like you did. Flash in there like you did, good, good, good. All right, get back out to the corner, to the corner. Good, 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 good. Ah, hold up, hold up. Now you, you see, yeah, you see where that, that's you. Yeah, that's good. And when you cover, when you cover out, you got to take away that direct corner pass. Because if he would have gave it back to me, I was firing it to him, and he was going to knock that down, would you? All right, how many shots you make earlier today? All right. I'm going to have to go back and look at the tape on that one. I'm going to have to go back and look at the tape on that one. All right, here we go. Here we go. Let's try to score. Oh. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up, hold up. Come on now. You got, you got to move. You got to move. You can't allow them direct passes like that. All right. Teams are trying, if you ain't good at this and you got teams who send multiple flashes, they can slice you up. That's why in practice, you got to work on all different things. There's only a few things that teams can do against this. They try to ball screen it. If they're standing around like we're doing, which probably 60, 65% of the teams do, believe it or not, even at the college level, it's so easy to guard. They will literally stand around like this and just pass it around until they can try to get an open shot. And by that time, the shot clock's run down, they got to take a bad shot. We rebounding it and we going on the other end to play uh, offense, all right? But the teams who, you know, they try to throw some stuff at us, they'll ball screens against it, they'll start in horn sets where they fill the elbows and make it tough. They'll send multiple flashes in there and you gotta work on these different scenarios just like you would do the shell drill. The shell drill, everybody does the shell drill man to man. Do the shell drill zone and work on those different, different actions offensively so that when you get hit with them in a the game, it's easy to guard. It's easy to pick up on. You got a question? I think he's about to do this. What if he goes short corner? Do I still front? Because I'm going to be literally blocked. If he goes short corner, yeah. so let's go through that scenario. Ball's here. But short corner with the flag. So we get it like a open. Yeah, so, so what happens is, go th throw a corner. You short corner, corner that's still you. But okay. you don't front it. Yeah, no, you don't front it. You sit here and guard it. Now, if it gets thrown short corner, we trapping that all day long. We gone. We gone. And you playing, you getting into here. You're getting into here and covering. If he flat, you can't let this guy flash in behind you. And you, yeah, and you're watching weak side. You can't let that guy flash in either. All right? And we're trapping that all day long. Now, if he throws it back out, wherever you want. Throw it back out. Hold up. That should be a steal, but let's say he catches it. Let's say he catches it. Then we're back in our normal spots. All right, it's simple stuff. We're back in our normal spots. And like I said, I can show you guys a ton of different looks that teams have tried to do against it. It all comes back around to the same, basically the same setups. And, and it's pretty predictable and pretty easy to read, especially against this defense, all right? All right, so here we go. We're gonna try to score here, all right? Don't flash, don't flash. Just stay, stay. Good, good. Those are the type of shots we force. And everything is contested, all right? Everything is contested. If guys don't contest in this defense, it, is, it sticks out like a sore thumb because it, 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 you're not doing your job. We tell our guys, do your job. Don't worry about anybody else. Do your job and everybody else will be fine. That is a common theme in our locker room, on the basketball floor, in practice, in the games. Do your job. Don't worry about anybody else. So if that ball goes corner, do your job. Get out there and contest if he shoots it. All right, do your job, sprint down there in front to post. Do your job, get down here and cover weak side lobs or rebound. You got to block out and rebound as well from that spot. All right, all right, here we go. Couple more, couple more reps. You're going to try to score here. Yeah, yeah, you got me thinking. You got me thinking. Hey, good. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Come on, come on. That's great ball pressure. You was feeling yourself and then you, you lost track. That's the thing. The thing about this game is, is what's next. You can't pat yourself on the back and you can't be worried about what happened two seconds ago. Not even a half a second ago because the game moves too fast. So do your job. You did your job here. The ball went here. You didn't do your job. All right. All right. Here we go. We're not flashing. We're not flashing. We stand stationary. All right. Here we go. Force me a bad pass. Shot. Good. Got to get there. 
Too late reacting. And you let me catch and make a chess pass. A chess pass. You may not get back in the rest of the game. You let me do a chess pass, let alone a regular pass. I mean, I should be throwing this ball right to you if I make a chess pass, because you should be in that line between me uh, and, and, and the corner guy. Right here. Yeah, there you go. All right, here we go. Start the ball, hold up. Start the ball at another spot. Start in the corner. Start it in the corner. Here we go. Oh, get one, get one. Move it, move it, move it. Good, good. Come on, get there. Good job. Where you at? Where you at? Yeah, Bulldog, where you at? I was over here. I was running back. He picked up. Okay. All right. He helped you out. He helped you out. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. And that happens. It ain't perfectly scripted. Sometimes you got to help each other. I, I love that he flew out there and challenged that shot because throughout the flow of a game, as much as we want to control every single pass as coaches, you just, it's impossible. It's impossible. So the more these guys can be on the same page and they're helping each other out, just like in man-to-man, -man, D, you're helping each other. Like Coach uh, Chambliss talked about early, emergency switches on ball screens. Sometimes it happens where this guy gets you on his hip and you can't square, get through the ball screen and square the dribble, and a guy who's dropped show on the center may have to step up and help you. That's what this game is all about. You got to help each other. So, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. That was him anyway. It was him anyway, but it brought up a good point. You're exactly right. All right. What'd you say? Yeah, he's dropping. It should be a steal. It should be a steal. All right, here we go. Good, good. Keep playing. Keep playing. Turnover. Turnover. That's how it happens. They bait you. They bait you. All right. Hey, let's go. Hey, three out. Three out to win. Lift. Lift. Three out to win. Lift. All right, here we go. Contest. Good. Hey, that's exactly what we want. You play the percentages. People, teams, we were down. We, when we play at Iola, the first playoff game, they hit 10. They went 10 for 15 from three in the first half. Coach was pulling his hair out. Then he was like, all right, they're going to eventually start missing, and we were all on the same page. They, they cannot keep this pace up. Eventually, it wears on them. And sometimes it doesn't, but it's going to wear on them more often than not. They went 10 for 15 from three in the first half and went like two for, two for 12 or something like that the second half from three. They start getting happy, they start jacking up bad threes, and it plays right into your hands, all right? So give these guys a hand. Good job, guys. Good job, good job. So a couple of bullet points to keep in mind. It don't even matter your personnel. The number one thing is that your guys are very energetic, all right? They're flying around, they're creating their own energy. The second thing is guys are communicating. You have to be able to tell, you know, tell guys where other guys are on the floor, and sometimes you may need guys to cover for you. You just got to talk to each other, communicate, help each other through each possession, um, and, and that creates a lot of confusion for the offensive teams. I've seen it happen. Um, the third thing is you obviously got to get back. You know, we use this. This was actually a good transition defense for us, too, because, you know, a couple of teams in our league score the ball really well and they get out. Bucknell gets out in transition and they push the ball like no other. They got really good guards, really good shooters. And we would just get back in a one through one and slow them down. It completely took them out of out of their their, their uh, comfort zone. Um, you know, so getting back on D and then you have to rebound against it. You get killed in this against this defense when you don't rebound. And then when teams just get hot from three, you know, so that's just a couple bullet points for this. It's a, I think it's a great defense and the game is ever changing. Each opponent is different. Each possession is different. And the more as a coach you have in your repertoire to sort of adjust to how the flow of the game is going, the more chance you give yourself and your team of winning games. So don't be so stubborn about, oh, I'm a strictly man guy or I'm a strictly zone guy. Read the situation, know what's good for your team and what isn't. And, and, and just use that to sort of gauge, you know, the flow of a game or what's best for your team. And I, I think you guys can be, you know, even more successful than you are now. But it's a fun defense. And teams that I've been on coaching with, with Coach Robinson and coaching with Bill Carmody now, the guys buy into it. They love it.
It's, it's a very high energy defense. They know their spots. It's simple. It doesn't create a lot of confusion. You don't have to worry about guarding 50 sets. You know, you play some teams, they run 50 sets. They got like 12 sideline out of bounds plays to score. And it's like, you don't want to be dealing with all of that. Keep the game simple for your guys and yourself. And that way, confusion won't get in the way. Keep it simple, stupid, as Coach Chamberlain said earlier. So, oh, what's up? Let's say it's tie game with 10 seconds left, right? Mm -hmm. And you know they're going to drop a play for like a flare wide open three. Are you going to stay in your one three one? or are you going to go man to man? Well, that's, when, that's the good thing about changing Ds. If we came down and played the one three one the last seven possessions, and we know in the huddle, they probably drawn up something against the one three one with the game on the line. So I may go back to two three matchup, or I may go man. I got all of these things in my repertoire. I'm constantly playing games with the other coach on the other, on the other uh, down the sideline. And that's the fun of it. You know, it's, it's, it's like playing chess. You're trying to figure out the next guy's move. But if you got one specific thing that you do, you easy to play against. You easy to scout. And it's like, it's, it's going to be hard. You got to be able to make adjustments as a coach and as a player because the game is just too many possessions and too many games in the season. Uh, you know, and, and the guys who don't make adjustments or the, the women coaches who don't make adjustments, they really struggle, especially down the stretch when there is 10 seconds on the clock. You know what I mean? Because everything's the same. Um, so uh, give these guys a hand again. They did a, they did a great job.